Welcome to my review of the M3D 3D printer. Uh, there's lots of other videos uh, online about this printer, so I'm just going to give you my quick take on uh, some good and bad things about it and uh, my overall opinion. Um, the price is really quite good for what you get. So I think that's probably what a lot of people have said. $350 US gets you a, a legitimate 3D printer. Um, that can print objects uh, about four cubic inches, give or take. Um, you actually get a little more than that, but roughly speaking, four cubic inches, which puts it in competition with something like the PrinterBot Play, which is a little bit more money, but of course you get a full metal construction with the PrinterBot. And, uh, um, but like I said, uh, for the money, I think it's pretty hard to beat it right now. The bad thing about it is kind of also the good thing, which is weird, but it's 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 really, really light and really quite small. But because it's so light, you end up having to kind of recalibrate it a lot. It's it's you gotta be careful as to what surface you put it on. Um, it gets kind of jarred around a little bit, especially if you do what I did. Um, you can see I'm using an external um, spool holder here. Uh, as opposed to using the clever internal hold that's goes in here, right? So you can kind of see there's a little uh, Teflon tube at the bottom there uh, that you feed the film in and through. And when you do that, one, it makes it nice and clean and neat. And two, it adds a little weight to the base of this thing, which you don't get with the spool being external. Eh, I could weight it. I've done that. I've put some weights in it, and that does help a little bit. But I just find that being able to see what the filament's doing, um, it just for me, it makes the whole process simpler. I can kind of watch to make sure there's nothing getting jammed or caught. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary, but I just found that the internal spool feeder just was more hassle than it was worth. It's very cool looking, and when it works, it works really nicely. But I just went with kind of a... Uh, a bit of a MacGyvered setup here. This is a, a print file they do give you that you can print an external uh, holder for one of their own reels. You can see I'm using quite a larger reel. This is a Hatchbox PLA reel. Um, so there's really no other way to do this other than kind of create some kind of spool holder. And I just did a really rough version here with like a Home Depot um, extension cord holder so and it works it's not terribly elegant but it, it does a job um, yeah I, I guess that, that if I had one major problem with this printer it's the spool just not being able to get fed properly whether it's internal or external because there's just too much friction a lot of the times for this little motor, the little stepper motor in the print head to, to kind of effectively feed it. So if you get any jams at all, any little snags in the reel, uh, it's it just has a little tough time. And sometimes it prints through it, but you'll end up with kind of messy print jobs and print jobs that get kind of off-centered. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I would say that was my number one problem with it, honestly, was just getting the spool working right and getting it to feed the filament properly. Once that gets kind of solved, um, it's it's a pretty nice little printer. It's printing a, this is just a calibration it's doing right now, so printing a little border. Um, gives you an idea of the speed of it. It prints quite quickly for the size of it and the cost. Um, and yeah, I, I really didn't have a lot of problems with it once I got past this getting the, the filament fed properly. It does require a lot of calibration, I found, but I, I'm i kind of new to this 3D printing thing. I don't know if it's a, a larger amount than the other, but you do have to periodically calibrate it. Um, you can see here I've taken, there is a cover that goes like a, a faceplate cover that goes over the print head. I took that off a little, quite a while ago, uh, and I used it because I wanted to make sure the filament was getting fed through the print head properly. And I found that with the print head cover off, and for whatever reason, it seems to work a little better. I don't know if there's some cooling issue maybe or what, but uh, also you get to kind of see where the where the filament's going and making sure that it doesn't get caught up inside. 
um, or it doesn't get misfed or something. So that's why I've left the printed cover on. But just snaps on if you were so inclined to put it back on. It comes with uh, its own software, which initially I've had this printer almost a year now, th you know, ten months I guess. Uh, initially, I didn't love it, um, but it's gotten a lot better. The latest edition of this uh, proprietary software from M3D is quite good, um, and I really don't have any complaints about it. It's you know, I'm sure some of the people listening who are a little more into this might want to use something. A little different and you can do that. Uh, I have tried um, uh, Octoprint with it, works fine, uh, but like I said the, the latest edition of the M3D software um, seems to be quite good, quite good and you can do pretty much anything you need. You can enter in g-code, you can change temperatures, the filaments, and uh, calibrate as, as you like. You can pretty much do all that in Octoprint too, so uh, I've used both and uh, if Octoprint works perfectly fine in M3D and gets updated quite regularly. So yeah, you, you, can, you can use either pretty safely. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't turn you away from either one. I guess the other thing is with printing, you're supposed to be able to print ABS. This isn't an ABS object here. Groot is done in PLA. Uh, but uh, you're supposed to use, be able to use ABS I've never tried it. I, I don't think it's a great idea. It's not a heated print bed. It's an open design here. Maybe it would work okay. I don't know. And maybe I'll give it a shot sometime. But I, I've never used ABS with it. If you want to try ABS, you know, they're coming out with a new printer, the M3D Pro, which is quite a bit larger, obviously. You can see it here. I think it does something like a seven cubic inch uh, print area. It does have a heated print bed. It's got a glass uh, print surface, uh, so it's probably a lot more capable of doing ABS. But uh, yeah, I, so sorry, I don't have any comment on on printing it uh, on anything else other than uh, PLA. Um, that kind of leads me to here's some sample print job. This is a really low draft quality chess piece. Um, Groot that I was showing a minute ago uh, took about seven hours to print. Um, did a reasonable job. This little gecko is just a little quick little print to give you an idea. These are the typical sizes that I'm printing. I, I don't print something as large as Groot that often, uh, but you can, and uh, you know it's uh, certainly capable of, of, of this kind of print. And even Groot was set at a pretty low uh, resolution too, so you could do a nice, much nicer job if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, yeah, that pretty much leads me to my overall feelings on the, on the printer. Um, it might sound like I'm being kind of negative to it, but I actually really quite like it. Uh, I think it's a great introduction to 3D printing. It gives you a lot of, um, you know, sort of uh, education on, you know, what happens when the filament gets clogged, what happens if this filament doesn't get fed properly. What happens if the first layer is too hot or too cold or doesn't adhere? Um, and you get a pretty good education on all this stuff without spending an awful lot of money on a MakerBot or an Ultimaker or something. So I I give it a thumbs up. I really like it. It's it's a fun little printer, and I think uh, for what it is, they've they've done a great job. And I I'm honestly considering buying the Pro when it comes out. Um, I think if they make you know a little bit larger print volume, if they could print a little faster, uh, heated bed, I, I think they they might have a winner there. You know, it's probably going to compete with something like the PrinterBot Play, which is in about the same price I think is what the Pro is going to be. Although they haven't officially released the price yet, but I, it sounds like it's going to be in that six hundred dollar range or slightly under. The PrinterBot plays around there, prints about the same volume. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what other people, other critics think of, uh, of those two printers. But, uh, yeah, for my money, um, I think the M3D uh, Micro is just a really nice introduction to 3D printing. So, highly recommend it. That's uh, it for me. Let me know if you have any questions about the M3D 3D printer.